All right, guys. All right. We're about to start real soon. Apologies again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, I don't even know what to say at this point. But we're going to start shortly. Just give me like, let's give it like five more minutes and then pass it around to your teams. Pass it around to everybody. Let them know. I just dropped it in the new Telegram chat. Um just pass it around, pass it around, give everybody time to hop on. Uh, you guys got to understand, for those who are frustrated, I'm getting the comments. I, I'm aware, I'm aware. Everybody, you know, is messaging me. Unfortunately, uh, due to the high volume, um, just running into issues, as you can see. Um, so IML is working on it. We're going to work on it some more when we get on afterwards. So in the meantime, we'll just conduct everything on YouTube. Uh, it'll be easier for people to follow, get access to, and then uh, we'll just take it from there. All right, so let's give it about five minutes. Let everybody catch on. Pass the links around to your teammates, to whoever is trying to get on board. Let them know. We'll be doing IML TV on my YouTube channel.
All right, guys, we're going to start. Uh, for all those who miss anything, they'll be able to catch the, the replay. Uh, I want to go over a few things before we get started. Make sure everything's good to go. Let's see here. Hold on one second. We're gonna we're gonna really focus, and tonight's session is actually gonna be a little bit long because I have to go over a few things. So it's not gonna just be trade, trade, trade. Look at setup, setup, setup. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit. It's going to be a little bit long session, but it's going to be good, though. You guys are going to learn a lot because I'm going to go over a few things. Just understanding, guys. We, we really got to get an understanding of how we're properly trading um, this $200 challenge. And again, I really want a lot of you guys to be successful. So in order for that to happen, I need you guys to have a great understanding of how to trade. And most importantly, how I trade and how I view the market and my viewpoints. All right. I got a lot of feedback. Uh, from last week on um, the two pairs that we've taken. So I decided to create a telegram chat for the longest people have been asking uh, for it. Uh, and, you know, even when I started the challenge, people wanted it. I didn't want to do it because I, I already knew, you know, the, the, the time spent in telegrams and, you know, I've seen a lot of people try to start their own telegrams and all the headaches they run into but i see where this is going and it's not right to you guys especially who's who are not on my team who are not you know who don't have my attention and time on a day-to-day -day basis so i understand a lot of you guys are brand new to the market and when you get in certain trades you might not know what to do if you know market changes on you switches up and let's be honest i'm only on twice a week so you won't hear back from me until next Sunday. <laughs> so, uh, so I created the telegram. So to keep you guys up to date on only pairs that I'm trading in the market, only pairs, it is not a signals channel. All right. Don't expect trades to be called every single day. That's what we have. IML swipe trades for. That's what we have all of IML's products and services. All right. Uh, I'm not there to call signals every day. Again, this is a journey I decided to take. Uh, you know, for all those who are joining me on this journey, $200, and we're just building it all of 2018. If we do this correctly, by the time 2018 is over, my goal is to have not only grown the account, but have grown as a trader, have grown overall as an individual. All right. And that should be your goal as well. So again, we're about to get started. All right. Like I said, this is going to be one of the longer IML sessions I've done. Uh, again, apologies for everybody who's hopping on. Uh, you know, trust me, it is not my intention to, you know, crash IML service. All right. That is not the goal. We do this. All right. Uh, just unfortunately, until everything is corrected and fixed the right way, we'll just do everything on my YouTube channel so you guys can still get the proper information. One thing I will say that you guys will get added benefit and bonus to is every update that I do on all the currency pairs that I'm trading, I will do uh, short clip videos. I'll upload it in the Telegram so you guys get a better understanding of what's transpiring, all right? So let's get started. We got about 1,600 viewers. Um, that's pretty good. So again, for all those who are trying to get on, make sure you pass it out to your teammates, pass it out to your friends, whoever's trying to uh, catch this webinar so you guys can watch, all right? Let them know I'm on YouTube and we're about to get started. Let's go. So. First things first, all right, let's go back to the two pairs that we took last week on the Telegram, all right, which was odd USD and Great Britain pound USD, all right? Matter of fact, I'm going to switch over to FX Choice, all right? I'm going to go to my live broker account, all right? So give me a second. I'm going to switch this over, stop, and let's go over to my actual... FX Choice account. So as you can see, guys, always remember this is the account that I'm trading on for FX Choice 69950. All right. And there's my current balance right now, $201.25. All right. Again, I'm only trading this account on IML TV. I will not take no other trades unless I'm on IML TV. Now, notice I got a lot of messages from a lot of you guys who already, you know, 
are 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 crazy down on your trades um have already blown if not all of your account or half of your account again guys when starting small you you can't over leverage we can't be putting in standards two standards this we're not we're not trying to hit the lotto overnight here all right that's number one money management is key i can't express that enough money management is key to this game and then number two you guys you have to pay attention uh a number of things that i noticed was one a lot of people got on the webinars and didn't even watch the whole thing like literally got on the webinar heard the trades and then were gone so you didn't even know or paid attention to how to protect your money because multiple times i talked about it because not only did i get inbox texts phone calls even messages left on the video that i did last week of oh i uh g you reversed on me and da 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 da, da. i told you guys multiple times when you get in profit protect your trades so let's go to au for example right so au was the first trade we actually took and we lost now i'm not embarrassed to take any losses all right any losses at all i'm not embarrassed if we lose a trade i told you it's not a problem most importantly it's going to be small compared to the big profits we'll make on our longer term trades so what happened with au so au dropped a little bit and then it reversed and hit our stop loss around 78 I want to say 700 750 somewhere around that range right so if i'm not mistaken i entered we entered matter of fact let me look to our trade history i don't even want to guess so as you guys can see right so as you can see i lost on this uh odd usd you guys clearly see that i lost so my stop loss was 78793 all right and my entry was at 78250 all right so a little over 50 pips, correct? All right. So 50 pips, boom, price hit me out, stopped me out. I lost about $10. So that took my account to 200 and actually 190, uh, 190 and change, right? Probably a little bit less. What allowed me to profit? So you guys are probably asking, well, why are you at $201? All right. Well, I told you, I took the GU trade. Took the GU trade. And if you took the GU trade with me, as you can see, the GU trade more than made up for my loss on the odd USD. Now, a lot of you guys let the GU trade retrace on you. When I clearly stated, once you get in profit to protect your trades, a lot of you guys did not do that. All right. The price dropped around, we got in, if I'm not mistaken, around this level. Yes. This level, price dropped. We're talking about close to over 100 pips. Price dropped over 100 pips. So we got in somewhere, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around here. Price dropped over, yeah, 90 pips, actually, not 100. As you can see, about 94 pips. How do you let the market retrace all the way without protecting your profits? Again, guys, once we get in profit, you want to move your stop loss in front of your profit. So if we're entering, let's say at 135571, if that's your entry and you know you're up about 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 pips, put a stop loss in front of your entry no matter what it doesn't matter about oh put it 10 pips 20 pips 30 pips i get that asked a lot or oh, how many pips it all depends it all depends on your target it all depends on where your entry was it all depends on how much in profits you are in right so as soon as you're up you're up a good amount move up your stop loss guys move up your stop loss don't let the market retrace on you like that all right don't ever let the market retrace on you like so for those of you guys who got stomped out unfortunately that's a lesson all right good thing is 
we learn from our mistakes. We learn from our mistakes and we do better. All right. So if you're on this call, you're listening, you're watching, your main goal, especially if you're brand new, you really, really, you're here to really learn. I understand we're all here. We want to make money. Everybody's trying to become rich. I get that. But if you don't understand how this works, you'll never make money. If you don't understand how this stop loss is more important than the take profit, you will never make money. All right? Always protect your profits. Every time you're up, protect your profit. So when the market does this, it takes you out of the trade. But guess what? You walk away with some money. Some money is better than no money or being or, or losing money. All right? So, guys, the name of the game is secure profits as much as possible. Take low risk, high reward trades. All right? So let's begin. Let's finally start. Let's analyze this weekly's uh, pairs and let's see what we got ahead of us this week. So I know for this week, we got some heavy news. We got CAD news and we got some odd news. All right. CAD news and odd news. That should be pretty, pretty big this week. So you really want to watch out for the CAD pairs and the odd pairs, but we'll get to that. All right. So. First things first, DXY, all right? Now, as you guys saw, basically on Friday, all USD pairs, um, dollar weekend, and then anything against the US dollar, basically skyrocketed. So you saw GU fly, EU fly, UJ drop, uh, USD CAD drop, all USD pairs across the board uh, got weakened. And as you can see right here, uh, market opened up with a big gap, boom. Now, I want to what I'm going to discuss tonight is basically market structure. I don't really talk about it a lot because, you know, that's something reserved usually for my private students. That's something I discuss within my team model, but I'm going to actually share with you guys because I want you guys to really really understand this. If you can understand market structure, how this works, you'll never fear what's happening even when the market goes the opposite direction or goes in the direction that you weren't expecting, right? I'm gonna show you guys and explain to you why I never fear what's happening in the market, all right? So DXY, we're gonna look at this on a weekly, let's change this to the weekly time frame. So looking at current price, right? Market has been on a big downtrend. Can we all agree? Market has been on a big, big downtrend. Big downtrend. It's been dropping. It's been dropping. It made it, found, it made this one corrective move, and now it's continuing down. Now, here's the thing. If price is to continue going down, a correction has to be made. Now, a lot of you guys are probably wondering, well, how do you know, Steve? How do you know price can't just, you know, continue dropping, going down, going down, going down? Well, this is how I know. When I say look left, the reason why I tell you to look left is not only because, well, we're looking at past history, is because the market likes to repeat itself. And as you guys can see, clearly, price doesn't just go in one direction, all right, no matter what. Like, take this for example, right? Take this big uptrend up here. Price didn't go in a straight line. Like, many of you guys believe the market moves that way, right? A lot of you guys think the market just moves this way. If that was the case, if the market just went up and down, we all be millionaires. Seriously, if it was that easy, if the market just shot straight up, straight down, we all be millionaires. It doesn't work that way. I wish it did. I really, really wish it did. It make my life easier. But the market doesn't work like, uh, work like that. Corrections have to be made. Corrections have to be made, right? It has to be made, especially if price really wants to take off, right? So take this downtrend, for example. You see here, look left. You see how price made this corrective move before continuing down? Corrective move before continuing down. Corrective move 
before continuing down, these, these moves must take place. They must take place. They must take place. They can't continue going in that direction without some type of pullback. All right. So if you understand that price basically has to pull back. Guys, let everybody know that I'm on YouTube. Let them know. Pass the link around. Pass the link around. Let them know. Let them know. Right. Knowing price has made the strong impulsive move here, it can't continue dropping down. Eventually, price has to pull back. Eventually, price has to pull back. So if you're selling the DXY, you're selling the US dollar, you want to be careful because at any given time, price can just move back, right? And you have no place to look further than in the past, right? You see how price dropped here? made that strong aggressive move down just like it did here and then made this corrective move all the way back up here so eventually a big pullback is going to happen the stronger the impulse move the bigger the correction all right so i'm only selling this i would only sell this if i saw a correction like this right saw a correction like this or something small like this right Preferably like this, right? Preferably like this, right? Preferably like this. I don't see this. I'm not selling. So I'm currently on the daily time frame. This is on the daily, right? Let's remove everything. Move all drawings. I'm on the daily time frame, right? So boom. So again, price has been on this downtrend. Been going down, been going down, it's been going down. Boom. Downtrend, downtrend, downtrend. If I'm trading off the daily time frame and I need a corrective move like this, I need to watch the four hour time frame. As you can see, the four hour, it'll let me know by watching the four hour, this is going to pull back. I don't want to go on the 15 minute. I can't watch the 15 minute. This is going to take much longer. A lot of you guys, where a lot of you go wrong, you you want to trade on the daily, weekly, and try to find your entry on the five minute, 15 minute, right? You're going to need a stronger confirmation. Why? Because the daily is a higher time frame. So if you're trading off the daily, you shouldn't be going no lower than basically like the one hour. So if I'm on the daily, and I see all these corrective moves just by looking in the past. I need to be on the four hour to look for these corrective moves. These corrective moves. So right now, I have no sell opportunity. Me getting into a sell right now, this is a trap. This is a trap. Because at any given moment, price can reverse and pull all the way back. That is how a lot of you guys get in trouble. You're chasing after the impulsive move when you should be chasing after the corrective move. All right? So now, knowing that the DXY is going to pull back, guess what's going to happen to all the USD pairs? They're going to strengthen. At some point, USD pairs are going to strengthen. And I'm going to explain to you why GU, EU, and a lot of other USD pairs are about to reverse. All right? So now, Euro USD. So we got Euro USD. So Euro USD basically went back to the top, which was expected. I expected this. Right? It finally broke up here. So again, like I just explained to you guys on the DXY, right? Eventually, a pullback has to happen right as you can see here this corrective move eventually that has to come so for all those who are in a buy i would be careful i wouldn't buy right now this is not a buying opportunity i wouldn't buy if you're looking for a buy you need to see something like this so we need to see something pull back so price consolidate pulls back and then buy 
All right. Now, for price to fully reverse, as you can see, I'm on the four hour. You need to see a strong impulsive move like this. A strong impulsive move like this. A strong impulsive move like this. You see the body of this candlestick? You need to wait for something like this. Pull back like this. Continuation like this. So I'm not getting in a sell just yet until I see a full body candle, preferably on the four hour time frame, right? Daily or four hour time frame. Close on a strong reversal, pull back for a flag, and then continuation. All right. So preferably come back down here, pull back like this, and then we get our continuation all the way back down here. All right. In the meantime, for those who are in a buy, because I know a couple people caught the buy and they were wondering where is G, uh, EU going, EU going. So if you get small, little small flags, right, pull back like this, keep buying. Keep buying. Keep buying. Just know that eventually this is going to stop. All right. If it creates a flag, keep buying. If it. All right. If it creates a flag, keep buying. So if it creates a flag like this, keep buying. If it creates another flag like this, keep buying. If it creates a pullback like this, keep buying. Right? I don't expect it to go all the way this high, honestly. Eventually, probably not this week, going into next week, we should see a big full reversal. All right? So I'm personally, I'm not interested in no buys right now. I'm, I'm looking for a sell, right? It's broken the top, and I'm going to show you other examples every time price broke the top, all right? Every time price broke the top. You see here? You see how price broke the top and then dropped? Same thing. See how price broke the top, then dropped? then dropped. See how price broke the top, then drop. Expect the same thing. Expect the same thing. So this might shoot up just a little bit, but be on the lookout. Overall, this is going to drop. So if you get small flags on the four hour, one hour, something like this, look for your buy. Know that your buy is short term. Overall, this is going to flip and come back and make a bigger correction. All right. So that's Euro USD. Hey, Britain, USD. All right. So this is the pair that we traded again. If you secured your profit, good job. If you didn't, now you know, lesson learned. All right. So now we're at the top. Same thing like Euro USD. Now, overall, GU, I still have it coming down. Somebody hit me up and said, oh, no, you were wrong. GU is going up. You said it was going to drop. Yes, I still believe it's going to drop, right? The overall outlook on this pair, again, is sell. And you know why I know it's a sell? And I'm going to show you again. Market structure. I'm going to explain this to you guys again. You guys see this? You see how this scaled all the way up? All the way up? You see how it did that? Boom, boom, boom. You see how it's crawling? You see how it's crawling? Right? Short candlesticks. This is on the weekly. It's just crawling, it's crawling. And then you got that vicious drop all the way down here, right? This is doing the exact same thing. Eventually, you're going to get that drop. Even if it doesn't come back and hit this low, for a fact, you'll get the price to come down to at least 129 right here, at least there, right? So that's a prime example right there. That's a prime example right there. Right there. See how it crawled, 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 and then made that vicious drop? This is doing the exact same thing. Boom. So now we're going on the daily. I admit I didn't expect this to break this high right here, but it did. So that's cool. I can show you another example, right? You have a perfect example right here. See this? 
See how price came up, broke through here, and then reversed and dropped viciously? Same thing, right? You see how price crawled up, crawled up, kept going up, kept going up, and then dropped? It's doing the same thing. Again, another one. Kept crawling up, kept crawling up, and then dropped. So all this is right here is a bigger correction up. Eventually, this is going to turn, and it's going to drop. All right? This is going to drop. So even if it stopped somewhere around here, even down here, that's still a good amount of pips. We're talking about over 900 to 10,000 units, 1,000 pip move. All right? So same thing like EU. You don't want to buy right now. You don't want to sell. You don't want to do anything. You want to honestly just let this play out. You want to either look. If it consolidates like this, consolidate something like this. Create something like that. You can look for another buy. If it slants, you see how this slanted on the four hour and then shot up? If this slants and shoots up, then you can buy. Right? Slant something like this, then you can buy. If it doesn't do that, if it reverses, if you get a sharp move, so for all those who are looking to trade GU, you need a sharp move down. A sh when I say sharp, impulsive move, I'm talking about a straight line down. Straight, strong line down, just like that. Then a pullback, like this, a flag, and then continuation down. That's how you know your sell is coming. All right? So as of right now, you don't do nothing. There's nothing to do. We're not buying. We're not selling. You don't do nothing. You buy right now, you're risking it. All right? Like I said, if it presents itself a nice flag on a pullback, yeah, you have a short-term buy, but that buy, you have to take profit quick because at any given time, this can turn around and start dropping viciously. All right? So that's Great Britain USD. All right? So you want to wait for a flag. Wait for we're either waiting for a flag or an impulsive move the opposite direction. That's how we'll know whether a, a sell is coming or another buy opportunity is coming. All right. So that's Great Brain USD. USD Swiss franc. All right. So this pair, I'm actually looking forward to. This is a pair we're probably going to trade this week. I like this pair a lot. All right. Especially long term. If this plays out accordingly, this is a trade I'm going to hold and swing. This alone will double our account if we trade this correctly. This will be a long, long-term trade. Now, why do I like this pair so much? Because the high probability of it getting all the way back here, right? Now, I'm going to show you an example. Now, if you notice, we're on the daily time frame. USD Swiss franc has been consolidating a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Now, I thought price would come up to at least 098700 before dropping, but it decided to drop. The lower it comes, the better the correction. And I'm going to show you an example. You guys see this right here? You see this? See all that consolidating? Boom. Price went up, went up, went up, went up, went up, went up. And then finally, boom, you got your move to the upside. So that's expected, right? Same thing over here. So right here, consolidated. You see this? Did that kind of pullback. You see this pullback right here? Right? This was back in June of 2015. You see how it pulled back after it initially made that move up? So if you come back over here, you see how market made this aggressive move up? And what is it doing right now? Consolidating, pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. So it's pulling back just like this. And then what happened? We finally got our big breakout to the upside. Boom. So I know this move to the upside is coming, right? I thought we'd get the breakout from last week up here, possibly consolidate there. You can take that out. So I actually like where price is at right here. The lower it goes, the better the buy opportunity. So now we're actually coming up around a demand zone. So let's look at where price is. Let's go to the four hour. Let's look at price around this range, around 96,500. So I'm definitely going to keep you guys updated on this. I'll definitely be looking for a buy because this will be a good opportunity. So we can see price come back up here, retest this channel, come back up to like 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0.98, 0
come back down one more time, right? That's what the market do. It's going to consolidate. It's going to go up and down, up and down. And then before you know it, boom, it's going to break out. All we know, eventually, it's going to get up there. If we use the timetable, we're talking about from up here to here. As you can see, we're talking about 100 days. So we're talking about a three-month move. So if this, this buy works out accordingly, I can hold this for the next three months. I can compound my account, my $200 account, 201 to be exact, my $201 account. By the time, basically a little over 90 days is over. So we're talking about the rest of January, February, March. So by April, guess what? This account is not doubled, probably tripled. Again, past performance can't guarantee future promises. Just got to let you guys know that. But this is looking like a great opportunity to buy, right? So you guys are wondering, well, do we buy now? Do we buy now? No, we don't buy now. Why? Why don't we buy now? This is one thing I do miss, not interacting with you guys to see your answers, but we don't got no impulsive move up, right? We got to see something like this, right? Always look left. We need a big, strong candlestick on the four hour to the upside. We need like an engulfing candlestick like this, like this. We need to have that over here. So we can't buy yet until we see that strong impulsive move there. If this consolidates something like this, if it does this instead, then you know another sell is coming. If it does that, so by tomorrow, if it's doing that, then we know another sell is coming, another sell. Eventually, this is going to turn around and go up. When it does, we're going to be in the buy for this. This is the trade we're going to grab, all right? So this will be ready. This one, for sure, I'm looking to get into. What's the cab? All right, so USD CAD. So we got big, big CAD news coming. Uh, I think it's on Wednesday. I know we got a lot of CAD news on Wednesday. And I think the odd news is on Thursday. I think so. I don't remember. Yeah, it's on Thursday, if I'm not uh, recall. So I'm going to try to get us in a CAD pair as well because I see a good move uh, coming with one of them. So we'll try to catch that. All right. So CAD. So CAD is right now. Let's look at the daily. So CAD is dropping. Let's go to the four hour. So boom. So we're coming up to this demand zone right here. Right. Why are we in this demand zone? Boom. When you go right. You see the move to the upside. Right. So we have that possibility of price coming. Can price break this demand zone? Of course. Right. Absolutely. So right now, we're looking for price to come down here, and we're going to see. Are we going to get basically a double bottom? Right? Come up. That's the V. Finish coming back up here. Or is price going to continue going down and eventually touching 121, 120 even? Right? So it all depends. So again, this is a pair that's not ready yet. All right? So if you're in a sell already, good. Keep it. Move up your stop loss. Let it run. If you're looking to get into USD CAD, you want to wait for a little flag, right? Something like this. Let's go to the one hour. You'll see the flags better. So something like this, right? And then drop. Something like this. And then drop, all right? So wait for a flag. And then you want to take profit because you're coming into a demand zone. Once it gets down to about one, two, three, 500 range, look to take profit because this can reverse and go back up. All right. And again, we got CAD news coming up. So with CAD news coming, this can push price and have it reversed, or we can see a bigger uh, drop. All right. We'll know more so by Tuesday. So when we get back on on Tuesday night, whether we be on IMLTV or here on YouTube, doesn't matter. We'll know whether we got a buy setting up or we got another sell opportunity setting up. All right. So that's USD CAD. USD JPY. All right. Boom. So USD JPY. So for all those, 
I should have traded. All those who traded the JPYs last week, good job. All right, you caught some beautiful, beautiful opportunities. Everything pretty much played out accordingly. Good job if you caught the JPYs. I caught some of the JPYs. I caught personally New Zealand JPY, all JPY. I should have been in Great Britain and Euro JPY. Those were the ones I wanted to get into. But make sure you got to always keep in mind, even though you got – opportunities across the board you don't need to be in every single trade all right even though i analyze all these pairs i'm not in every single trade right i just pick a few good opportunities that i see i capitalize on it and then that's it all right so what do we have here we got a good opportunity coming for usd jpy all right we got some good good opportunities i'm gonna erase everything for you guys and break this down all right so we're looking at the higher time frame right now all right, so we're on the weekly here. All right, look at this move. Even though UJ's been dropping, look at this move. You see the strong impulsive move? The strong impulsive move right here. Believe it or not, this whole time, UJ has been correcting itself, getting ready for the next wave up, right? You know how I see that? Look at this. Right here, look left. This is called market structure. This is what I mean by market structure. You see this? And then you see how it's up? Same thing, boom. And then you had a vicious move to the upside, all right? When price is consolidating like this, it's ranging back and forth. So for people who think, oh, UJ's in a sell, it's in a sell. It's in a sell at the current moment, but long-term, it's not a sell. This is actually looking to go up, all right? So you see that here. And then you see it again, right? You see that move to the upside again. You see this? And then boom, again. And then you see it again, right? Consolidate and then big move to the upside, right? So that's what this is right here. You see that? That's what you're looking left for, guys. You're looking to see what type of pattern is currently happening with the current uh, pair that you're trading. Right. This is what I look for. This is how I'm able to analyze the charts. I'm able to say, OK, well, price shot up. This is the impulsive move right here. Price has just basically been consolidating. It's basically creating a flag, setting up for the next wave up. So let's break this down. Let's go to the daily. So now we got UJ right here. We are in a very strong area of demand here and here. Eventually, UJ is going to turn around. All right. I don't see price coming all the way down to 107. It would have to really break through this demand zone and this uh, zone right here. So let's go to the four hour. Be on the lookout for price to reverse. Because price can reverse around here between low 110-200 and shoot back up to 114. Or price can break this low, come down to this wick area right here. So actually, let's move this. Come to this wick area around 109 before reversing. So it can reverse at this point or around here, around the 110, and come right back up. All right? Long term. Again, this is something that's going to come all the way back up to 118, eventually 122. All right. I just showed you an example of why that can happen right here, right here, right here, right there. All right. That's all this is a bigger correction to move to the upside. All right. So I'll also be on the lookout for this. I don't know if I'm really going to trade it. If the opportunity looks good, I'll get into it. I'll probably get into more than two trades. I told myself I'm only going to do two trades at a time. Still going to try to stick to my rule. Only if UJ presents a good, good opportunity. If I see a nice, strong, impulsive move to the upside, then I'll take the buy. All right. So what am I looking for? Or if anybody's looking to trade this on their own, right? This is what you're looking for. You need to see a strong, bullish move like this right? A big, strong move on the four hour, the four hour or the one hour. If you go on the one hour, make sure it's a strong candlestick like this. 
Not a small little bullish candlestick, a strong bullish candlestick, a long one, a very, very long one. All right. It has to be a long one. If it's not a long one, don't take it. It has to be a long one, something like this, similar, but it has to happen around here. If that presents itself, I'll take the buy. If not, don't take it. If it's going to create a flag like this, sell again. Flag like this, sell again. So it can do this. On the one hour, it consolidates, consolidates. You know another sell is coming. All right? So that's you, Jay. Just be on the lookout. A reversal for a buy will be coming up soon. Odd USD. Odd USD, same thing. So it broke this high. Let's erase all this. Right, so odd USD is coming up, right? It broke this high up here, right? So before it gets back up to the top around 080, right? You gotta see some type of corrective move. So same thing here. So it's broken up, even if you're looking to buy, right? We got to see a pullback. Let's go on the one hour. So you see this? Pullback, pullback. If you're going to buy, wait for a pullback. All right? A sell will only present itself if we see a big, strong move down. Corrective. And then sell again. All right? We would have to see a strong, bearish move down. Corrective move. And then sell again. We got odd news on Thursday, I think. Yeah, third Thursday. So we'll see if we'll get that impulsive move down, then correction, then we can sell again. All right? If not, if you're looking for a buy on this, then you got to wait for a corrective move like this, a flag like this, a flag like this, like that. All right? Let it just pull back. There's no buy or sell opportunity now. Because if you get in for a buy now, then this can drag out. Like you see, somebody who got in for a buy right here got into a deep correction right here. You don't want to do that. Let it correct itself before buying. But keep in mind, eventually, it's going to have to pull back. It's going to have to pull back. You see how it did it here? Right, went up, and then you had that big move down here, big corrective move there, big corrective move there. So eventually, you're going to get that corrective move here. All right? New Zealand USD. Same thing. Right. So I wasn't expecting price to come up here again, but it did. All the USD, they basically all broke that extra high, but that's all right. Right? I'm still, if you look at New Zealand USD, look at all the uptrends, right? Like how it did. Corrective moves, corrective moves. I'm still expecting some type of move like this, like this, or a deeper correction like this, right? So hopefully this comes down like this before it even wants to consider coming all the way back up here, right? So because even if it price gets all the way back up to 087, then we'll get this move down, back down again. If you guys remember... For all those who were with me back in, I want to say July, August, we caught the sell move here. We caught this, caught the correction, and caught the sell move all the way down here. We caught that. So now we're getting the move all the way back up, come all the way back down. All right? Same thing. We caught all this. This was called. You go all the way back to the recording. This was a drop that was called. You can even look on my trading view. Um, actually, yeah. Trading view account. This would um this was a sell that we called all the way back here. Caught this entire move all the way down to around I think our take profit was around zero six eight. So now you're waiting for a corrective move there. So four hour, what you're looking for is a pullback, 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 pullback. You're looking for this, right? This. We're not buying yet. You gotta wait for it to consolidate and pull back. If it pulls back like this, like this, like this, you can buy. It got a slant, right? If you notice, every pullback slants. It slants. It slants. 
to set up for the buy. It slants to set up for the buy. Slants to set up for the buy. A good slant was GU, right? You see how GU slanted before it set up for the buy? You see how this entire thing slanted before it set up for a buy? If you recall, I think about two weeks ago, remember when this was dropping and you guys were like, get in for a sell? And I was like, no, I don't like this sell because I didn't like the way it was slanting. Remember, if it's a true sell, and I'm on GU for, for a moment, if it's a true sell, you get an aggressive move down. You see here, the slant, if a sell, if you know something's going on a sell, it'll slant up. If you notice, the slant is always up. Slant up. Slant up. Right? When it's slanting down like this, like this, like I'm showing you on New Zealand USD, like right here, you know that a buy is coming up. All right? So when it moves sideways, you just look left. Look at it, that first impulsive move. Look left. If it's an impulsive move up and it's slanting down, you know another buy is coming. If it's an impulsive move down and it's slanting up, you know that another sell is coming. All right? Always keep that in mind. Pay attention to these moves. Pay attention to how the market is pulling back. It's telling you a story. It's telling you a lot. All right? So New Zealand USD, wait for a pullback before any buy. Don't just because eventually you're going to get that pullback. All right. So that's pretty much all of the U.S. pairs. Yes. All right. JPYs, Great Britain, actually Euro JPY. Euro JPY. So this was a good one. Whoever caught the sell from last week, that was a good one. Good job. That was the one I even called on my uh, Facebook Live, whoever was on it. I think that was when I was in Detroit. Many, and I missed that whole move. That was a good move. This dropped from 136 all the way to 133. That was a nice 300 pin move. So whoever caught that, good job. So now price is coming up. So this is what I see transpiring with this pair. So I still got a sell coming. So if price consolidates within this range, comes up, it comes up, look to sell. Look to sell all the way back down. I'm still short on all JPY pairs, even if it comes back to the high. Every time it comes back to the high, 136, look to sell. 136, 137, look to sell, look to sell, look to sell. All right? Remember, this move right here, the corrective move. I'm going to show you again, break down why, right? You see how... Right here, come up here. You see what this did? It's a perfect example. You see how it consolidated right here before actually dropping? See all this? See all this? And then it finally dropped. You see how it did that? Same thing. If you think about it, this is exactly what EU, uh, EJ has been doing the entire time, been consolidating. And this range is going up and down, up and down, up and down. Eventually, we're going to get this drop. Right? You look left, you got nothing but supply zones setting up for a drop. All right? So, smaller time frame. Again, if price doesn't break, Go on to four hour. If price doesn't break 135, 600, and it just consolidates here, look to sell. Look to sell and take profit around 133, 132. Again, we still have to break this low in order for price to really give us that drop. I don't think we'll see a big type of movement on JPY until news hits, I think, later this week. I mean, later this month, probably in two weeks. I think that's where we're getting the news. About two weeks. Yeah. Somewhere around there. So I'm still looking. I'm still a sell on this. Remember, it hasn't done anything. Even though it reversed here. Remember, it hasn't been doing nothing. It's just been consolidating in this range. It still hasn't made a big move. Right? So I think that big direction is coming, like I said, in the coming weeks. I'm looking to most of the JPYs. 
for a big, big drop. All right? Great Britain, JPY. I'm going to give you guys all scenarios on Great Britain, JPY. And, again, sell, 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 sell. All right? We're looking for nothing but sell opportunities on GJ. Right? Nothing but sell opportunities on GJ. I don't see JPY coming all the way back to the top. It's a possibility. It can break that high. Right? It can break that high. Minimum, price should come back down to 147. At least 147 before even thinking about going back up to 153. Even if it does come back up and break this high, look to sell. Look to sell. All right? Remember, long term, all the JPYs are looking bearish. They're all looking bearish. So look to sell. Look to sell to around 147. All right. So let's go to the four hour. Right. So we might actually get one more move up. So as you can see, JPY is dropping now. So we might see something like this drop down. Right. And then a move up, up here. But if price comes up to around 153, go to 154, whatever. Look for a sell. So when it gets to that high, what are you looking for? You're looking for a bearish engulfing candlestick like this on the four hour or on the one hour, right? Don't go to the five minute, the one minute. You need a strong confirmation because you're trading on a higher time frame, right? The more amount of pips you get, the bigger the, the bigger to take profit, the bigger the payout. So you need a strong confirmation, right? You can't trade off the weekly, which is going to take weeks, months to pay out and trade on the one minute. You can't do that, right? So if you're looking for a good solid entry, you're going to need to trade on the four hour, no, no lower than the one hour. And you're going to need a confirmation like this, a strong bearish confirmation like this, something like this, confirming the downtrend, something like this, this magnitude, all right? Wait for that on the four hour, one hour time frame. all right? So right now, what you see with GJ is a pullback, but setting up for one more up move. So don't be surprised. This shoots up, touches 153, but eventually later on in the week, it turns around and sells. If I see this opportunity, I might take this. I know for sure we're probably most likely going to trade USD, Swiss franc, because that's, that's pretty much guaranteed for me. Like I'm probably going to go big on my other account. I'll go big. And then on the $200 account, uh, you know, that for me, that's like pretty much a sure, sure bet. If you guys remember the silver trade we took weeks back when I said that buy was coming, that's how I feel about USD Swiss franc. So that buy, I feel real comfortable. If there's another opportunity, it's between GJ and then um, Euro, I think it's Euro odd, the Euro odd or Euro New Zealand. I think it's both. We'll go over those pairs later. But Euro Odd and Euro New Zealand are also looking like good, good, clean buy setups. All right. But again, I'm only taking two trades. If I take a third one, I'm going to make sure it's a good setup. But and again, I'll advise all of you guys who are in the Telegram. I'll drop my analysis and we'll keep an eye on it. All right. If I happen to take that third trade. Remember, we got to build our account up compound before we can start trading multiple pairs. All right. The goal is to protect the account. So we're only taking the best low risk, high reward setups. But uh, GJ is looking good. We'll probably see one more move to the upside, probably around 153. Look to sell around this area, right? So that's GJ. So all JPY. All JPY. So I caught this move. Whoever caught this move with me, we made some good money. Right, I should have been in GJ and UJ, but I was already in despair, so it's all good. So now we're getting a flag like this, kind of creating now. Probably drop around here. Look to sell around 88. It should come to this trend line around 86 before heading back up. Right, so look there. Only if you get this type of confirmation, if it comes down aggressively and you get that bearish impulsive move. Look to sell, take profit around 86, all right? Around this trend line, all right? Before possibly shooting back up. Long term, though, this should actually calm down a little bit more, 
all right? Probably to around the 75 range, right? If we look at this, remember, this has been on a downtrend, right? Down, up, it's been consolidating, came up, down. So we're looking for the bigger move down, back down here. So you do have a sell opportunity coming. It's creating a flag. Look to sell, drop down here, all right? I'm not really interested in all JPY. I traded it last week. I see a, I see better opportunities and other pairs. But if you're looking to trade this, you do have an opportunity. Look to sell around 88, 200, 300, um, 300 range before um, getting into the trade. And then, again, your take profit will be down there, down at around 86, or at least move up your stop loss. All right. If you don't want to take uh, your sell at this high, let it break this low. When I say break price, the body of the candlestick has to close below that wick. Always keep that in mind. Anytime you're waiting for price to break a certain range, whether resistance or support, you want the body of the candlestick. How, you know how many times you guys have seen a trade wick down, like currently like right here? It looked like, but on the four hour, it didn't close. And then what happened? A reversal happened. So you want to see the body. The body is where the uh, real price is, the volume of the movement of the market is. So you want to wait for the body to close below this before you get in for yourself to ride it further down. All right. Brazil and JPY, same thing. We'll probably see this come up, come up back around here, possibly hit up here before coming back down. All right. So look for that. The way this is slanting, possibly you see a, a buy opportunity happening, right? So there's a good chance this could come all the way back up to 81, 81, and then you're going to look to sell. You're looking for this type of price action, all right? This type of price action. You see this bearish engulfing candlestick? You see that strong impulsive move? Then you got the flag. You see what I was talking about with uh, GU? A U E U all those. This is what you're looking for. Impulsive move down. Impulsive move down. A flag, and then that's your sell. So you're waiting for the same thing. So you got your impulsive move up. This is pulling down. You can see one more move up, and then the reversal. All right. So look to sell around 81, 200 range, and then sell. You take profit would be around like 79. So you got about a nice, not a 200 pit move, I would say from here all the way down there. Yeah, about 150 pit move. So that's not bad. All right. So you're all odd. So this opportunity I do like. This is what I might take as my second trade. So I already got USD Swiss franc. I got euro odd. Now, I'm not entering both those trades right now because there's no confirmation. So we might enter them on Tuesday. If I happen to enter them tomorrow, I'll update you guys all in the Telegram, all right? I'll definitely let you know that I'm getting in the trade in the Telegram, all right? Remember, we're not forcing ourselves to get in trades. So if you guys remember, and this is why I'm never, ever afraid of trades. Remember, guys? When I was looking for a sell on Euro Odd, remember weeks back, and it kept going up. And there was many of you, Steve, Euro Odd is going to go up, it's going to go up, it's going to keep going up. I had somebody tell me it's going to go all the way back up to 164. I said, no, 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 no. I said, no. I said, no. I said, no. I literally had somebody explain to me, broke down why it's going to come and reach that high, why I was wrong, yada, yada, yada. I said, no. You know why? Because every move requires a pullback. So I said, once price came here, this pullback would happen. I think many of you guys took that trade. You took it and you profited. You made a lot of money, which is good. So now we got a nice uptrend finally coming, right? Boom. I think we got a nice opportunity here. I really want to take this opportunity. Let's go on the four hour. So price broke through this channel here. We can see price come all the way back up to 157. All right. We need to see price probably consolidate, come back here just a little bit. It looks like it's creating uh, an M right here, right here, right here. 
So I want to see it pulled possibly down here, honestly. If it could come somewhere near down here, that'd be great. Come down here, and then we can look to buy. Go up, right? If price starts to consolidate somewhere in this range around here, we'll look to buy. We'll definitely look to buy. I wouldn't personally, I would personally buy, if we're going to buy, before the news on Thursday, and I'll update you guys on Thursday, if price is not down here or somewhere down here, we'll look to buy above this high here. So around 154, 500, because then price can really go up because this has room to get all the way back up to 157. All right. This will be a nice, clean move. And I know a lot of you guys like trading. You're all with me. It moves smooth, clean, right? Not much of a headache. As you guys can see, it should take no more than like a week to get back up there. And it's a 300 pip move. So I like this opportunity here. So this might be my second trade of the week. USD Swiss franc and buy and then Euro odd buy. I like those two right there. So Euro odd is not ready just yet. I'm looking for it to extend the second leg of this M potentially come down here, hopefully by Wednesday, Thursday, possibly by the news, it's down here to start the reversal to go on the big uptrend, all right? I will keep you guys updated definitely on Euro Odd. So keep your eyes on Euro Odd because that's a pair I'm definitely going to trade this week. Euro New Zealand. So Euro New Zealand, pretty much the same thing. Euro New Zealand, pretty much the same thing. There. Go on the four hour. So it did the same thing like uh, Euro Odd. So it consolidated, and then you got the strong impulsive move here. So if price consolidates here, so if price consolidates within this range, kind of like it did here. You see how it did this? If it does that over here, we're going to look to buy because this has room to go all the way back up, all right? Even if it comes up to here, right there, we got a nice, you know, over, I'll say a close to a 300 pip move just from right here up to here. Yeah, 245. But this has room to go all the way back up, which is a 700 pip move. I know a lot of you guys caught this sell all the way down. Right, so now we're basically around the reversal range, right around here. So now we should see price reverse and go back up. Right, look at how let me remove all this. Look at that big, strong, bullish engulfing candle on the daily. So that's a good, strong indication. You see how this and then came all the way back up. So, what we're looking for is a little pullback like this, and then boom, move back up. Hopefully, we get all the way back up here to the top. If we can catch this, this will be a nice one. This will probably be my third trade between this and GJ. I'll let you guys know if I take either or. All right? I'll keep you updated on that. But for those who are looking to trade anyways, let this consolidate. Create a flag just like it did here. Right? Just like it did here. And then let uh, this move up for the same thing and then boom your take profit your first take profit range will be around 170 200 198 right around that range or you can try to leave it long term and let it get all the way back up to around 174 all right euro cad so euro cad went all the way back up so you see here it ain't coming deep into the demand zone but uh, as you can see, it tapped it and then went all the way back up. So this has room to go back up more. This is not coming down. This is going to go all the way back up. All right. So for those who are wondering, yeah, I'm still looking for a big sell. I think it will still come back and touch 144. But before it gets up there, I think it's going to get possibly back up here. All right. Probably break this high again and get all the way up here. We'll know by CAD News on Wednesday. So let this consolidate, right? Let it consolidate like this. 
let it consolidate, and then take your buy up. All right, take your buy all the way up to 153. Where current price is right now, 151, 151, 900. So for those who are looking for this, you got a nice buy of 170 pips. That's good. For a lot of you guys, especially brand new traders, that that will make your week. Let this consolidate. Let it pull back. Let it pull back like this right here, right? Let it pull back like this. Let it pull back like this. Let it pull back like this. Let it pull back. Wait for it. Just be patient, guys. Be patient. Let the move come to you. Let it pull. Don't jump in right now. It's Sunday. Don't jump in. London session. Let it pull back. I especially when there's big, big news, always keep this in mind. When there's heavy news coming, the market, what it loves to do, it likes to stall. Like if you guys notice every time NF, it's NFP week or FOCM week or some big news event, don't you notice the market when you're trading certain pairs, it does, it's not moving accordingly. It's not moving as fast as you think, right? Because usually what the market does, it likes to set it up for that big day event. So we have heavy CAD news coming on Wednesday. So don't be quick to jump in any CAD pairs. Let them make their move. Come late Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll have a better idea of what this pair is doing. So if this is slanting like this, come, come Wednesday, come especially late Tuesday, Wednesday, oh, we got a nice buy opportunity, all right? So let it do its thing, let it pull back, and then by Tuesday night, we'll know if we got a good buy opportunity coming, right? I really don't see this reversing and dropping down, right? Look at this strong move up. I don't see it coming all the way back down. I see it honestly reversing, going all the way back up. That's EuroCAD. Euro Swiss Frank. So Euro Swiss Frank keeps going up, keeps going up. Somebody asked me, you sure Euro uh, Swiss Frank is going on a downtrend? Again, market structure. So I'll give you guys an example. Another example. I said, today I'm going to give you guys an example of how, what market loves to do. All right. You see this? See how I, I zoom all the way back up? You see how price came all the way up before dropping? Boom. You see this bigger one all the way up? And then finally dropped? You see that? All the way up and then finally dropped? That's what you're getting here. We're getting just a big move up. So this might continue up, up, up. And you see how it's dragging, right? It's not really going on a big uptrend or big anywhere. It's just dragging. Eventually, we're going to get a vicious move down. A vicious, vicious move down, right? So what do we do? Same thing. Same thing, same thing, same thing. If you're interested in trading this, every time you see a strong bearish move down, reversal like this, wait for a flag, and then sell again, all right? If you're looking for a buy opportunity, like one setting up now, take the buys. Ride it up, take profit quick. All right. So, like how it dropped, then went up, take profit quick. Drop, go up, take profit quick. Because eventually this is going to turn and it's going to drop viciously, right? It's going to drop all the way down, something like this. All right. So, yes, I still believe Euro Swiss franc. And if you don't believe me, all you have to do is look back, look in the past, look at that pattern. Look at this pattern right here. Take a visual look at this pattern. You see how it's crawling up? It's crawling, crawling up, and just look. Go in the past. That's all you got to do. And you'll see plenty of examples of price crawling up and then dropping crazy. Crawling up and then dropping crazy, right? Crawling up, crawling up like this, and then dropping crazy. The market repeats itself over and over again. The only thing we can do is... Try to position ourselves to make sure we catch the move. But we don't decide when the market is going to move, unfortunately. I, I wish I can tell you it's going to move tomorrow. I wish I had that power. Unfortunately, we don't. All we are is analyzers. We just analyze the market, analysis, give our analysis on what the pairs possibly might do, and trade whatever they give us. So if they give us a flag, to buy, then we buy. That's it. If this, if it keeps doing this, keep buying, take profit, keep buying, take profit, buy, take profit, 
And then eventually you're going to get that big move down. All right. Euro Great Britain. Got Euro Great Britain going up. Still got Euro Great Britain going up. All right. Boom. That price coming up. As you guys can see, price has just been consolidating up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. I think we will get one more move back up to the high, 190, before it comes back down there. All right? So what you want to do is one hour, right? Wait for this to come down, probably around here. Look to buy around 88, 400 before, before buying. I wouldn't buy. I see one more move dropping down, and then it come up. All right, buy there. That's your range, and then your stop loss below eighty-eight, even around this range. Take profit around zero nine zero, and then we should look for a sell opportunity because price should come down here before eventually going back up again. All right, that's your Great Britain. All right, Great Britain odd. Great Britain odd. So price finally reversed, right? All it did was give a bigger correction. I'm still looking for a sell. I'm kind of upset with myself because I knew the sell was coming. Should technically still be in the sell because this has dropped tremendously. I don't know how many people are still in the sell. If you're still in the sell, amazing job. Keep holding. You're up about 800 pips. Even with the retracement, you're still up about five, 600 pips. If you've taken profit, well, good job anyways. So looking at this, all price is doing, creating a pullback, right? So you might see a little pullback up here, but eventually price is going to come back down here, all right? So that's on the weekly. So based off the daily, we got this engulfing, probably see price come around 175, all right? So about 200 pips. Again, we got odd news. The way this is setting up, this flag, Kind of like Euro Odd, how I like that Euro Odd setting up for this buy. That's how Great Britain Odd setting up. So we got possibly a buy opportunity happening. Let it finish. Don't buy now. There's no signal to buy now. Let it drop. Let it drop. Eventually, somewhere around here, you'll get that reversal to shoot up. Once it does, take profit. You're going to take profit around 175. It could possibly come up to 176 because eventually this is going to turn around and go back down all right because long term price is heading all the way back down here all right all the way back down to 163 but as of right now it's setting up for a buy opportunity it's going to drop and then you'll probably see a reversal to shoot back up great britain new zealand got the same thing happening Right, so you got a pullback on the four hour. Let this pullback happen, let it come, let it come, and then eventually you're gonna ride it all the way back up to around 193. Right, 193, and then you're gonna get the move back down to 184 if everything plays right. Right, so you're on the one hour if you're looking at GN. Let the flag happen. Let the drop come. Let the drop. Probably look to buy around this demand zone, right? You see this big impulsive move up? Look to buy there. Once you get confirmation, so the same thing you need to happen over here, right? So let it pull down. Don't buy now. Nothing to buy now. Let it pull. Let it pull. And then once it gets down here, possibly look to buy. Hey, Brandon Cad. Great Brain CAD has potential to come all the way back up to 172. We got the big move up there, creating a flag now. You see how what I said with flags on an uptrend, you see how they slant? They're slanting. Let it slant. Eventually, you're going to get that move up, right? And then you have CAD news coming up. So keep that in mind.
tab news coming up, we can see price come all the way back up to 172, possibly even higher, 173. All right. We're slanting now. With bad news coming on Thursday, look for that move to shoot up. Gray brain CAD. What did I do in New Zealand? Gray brain Swiss franc. Gray brain Swiss franc. Gray brain Swiss franc. The way it's looking, we can probably see this come all the way back up to 134. Right? All the way back up to 134. Don't see it coming all the way back up to high 134. It could possibly. There's always the possibility. I don't see it breaking up that high. But if it does, look to sell. If price gets up there, I think there's some great uh, Swiss franc news later on this week. I'm not sure. I'll confirm with you guys on Tuesday, and I'll let you know in the Telegram. This will be a good opportunity, though. If you do have the opportunity, if you're trading on your other account, you have a bigger account, and you want to catch this, this will be a good opportunity to catch. Let this flag finish. Uh, let it come up. Look to sell because overall this is coming down. All right. If you remember way back, right, we got that big opportunity for price to come down, right? So look to sell. Look to sell once price gets all the way up there. All right. At 133, 900, 400 range. Like I said, there is a possibility it can get back up to 134. I don't see it really happening, but possibility, right? It should drop technically from this level, all right? But we'll know by tomorrow, Tuesday, all right? Dotcad, Swiss franc, JPY. We got all the gray brain pairs. All right, cool. Broadcast, because I know somebody's going to message me about Broadcast. So, boom. We got a, as you can see, we got a buy opportunity and then we got a sell opportunity coming up. We got a sell opportunity coming up down here. All the way up at 0 0.99. All right. So, Again, with CAD news, price should probably get up there and then drop. This pair moves very, very slow, like I've always said. And as you can see, this flag is pretty much completed. You see how it's slanted and then break out, and now it's looking to go up. So you'll probably ride it all the way up to around the 100 range, this supply zone right here. Right? Look left. This supply zone right here. And as you can see, this move down here. You expect that move right there. So look to sell around 0.99, high 0.99, around that range. And then you want to sell all the way back down to 0.96. This is going to be a while. This pair moves very slow. I don't know why you guys like trading this pair, but it moves slow. So this will take like over a month. All right. That's odd CAD. Odd New Zealand. All New Zealand, this is another slow, slow pair. I'm personally not interested in trading all New Zealand until it gets down here, all right? No price gets down here, I'm not really trading because I know a big move to the upside is coming. Now, how do I know that? Well, I'm going to show you again. And this is why understanding market structure is very, very important, all right? So pay attention. So you see this right here, all that consolidating, and that's on the weekly. So this is weeks, 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 weeks. So we're talking about a year's time, right? So I probably won't even check back on this pair, honestly, until towards the end of 2018 or at least probably summertime by the time price gets up there. But you see what happened? When price finally came down, down, and then you had this big move up, we never got a big move up like that again, right? 
So some of you saying this move, it really wasn't. No, because this price never came all the way back up to this top right here. Never came back up. So what I'm looking for is when we get the completion of this downtrend down here, right? Come down here, probably down here, we should get a big, big move all the way back up here. That's really what I'm interested in. But as you can see, 238 days, this is going to take about a year's time. Then half the year, right? So I'm not interested in trading all New Zealand, but if anybody likes to trade it, look for a sell, right? Probably dance up, come back up around here and look to sell. But this pair moves very, very slow, all right? All right. USD, Mexican. USD Mexican. So USD Mexican is coming down, actually coming back a little more than I expected, but that's fine with me. The better the pullback, the bigger the uptrend. Let's see if it can get down here before going back up. I will. We will see towards 2018, not by summer, up to 20, definitely 21. All right. This uptrend is coming. This is just a pullback. This is not a full reversal right here. This is just doing this. Right? Kind of doing this. Kind of like this before setting up. Probably making a bigger deep before setting up. I'm still expecting this move to come back. So let the downtrend continue. Remember, kind of like what I showed you with the DXY. Remember what I showed you with the DXY in the beginning? How that's eventually going to reverse and come up to a big uptrend? That means the US dollar all across the board is going to get a lot stronger. So eventually, this is going to reverse and come up big. So if you were paying attention, if you saw how this was slanting up and then wicking out at the top, go on the four hour, boom, 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 you would have uh, anticipated this drop right here. So now we're going to expect a reversal, a bullish um, engulfing candlestick, probably on the four hour, one hour, and then look to buy. All right. Because these are, I know I called the uh, buy on this. Again, you guys got to be careful with this pair. It's like trading cryptocurrency. So if you don't have a big account, definitely don't want to trade this on the $200 account. You will, you know, blow your account. The spreads are insane. But see some type of pullback somewhere like this, maybe up to this level, and then back down to this low before going back up, right? And then we should see our move back up, all right? All it's been doing is consolidating, as you can see. So it's just been ranging back and forth, back and forth. So you might see it come up a little bit and then drop to the low before actually shooting up, all right? Long term, I do have this coming up eventually up here to this level and if the us dollar gets strong enough all the way back up to 13 all right this is a strong move if it moves in your direction just right here you're talking about over 260 pips right here 500 pips it gets all the way up here we're talking about over 1200 pips all right so if you can handle it you have the account size look to buy at the low around 1221 around this wick range, low range, and then your take profit will be around high $12, $12.77. And if you can hold long term, hold all the way up to 13. Gold. All right, so gold. Actually, this is silver. So silver. I wish I would've kept my buy in silver. I took profit, bought down here, boom. So it's playing out nicely. I thought it was going to uh, correct a little bit more, but it didn't. So this was the correction. So now it's going up. Look to take profit around 18, all right? Because around 18, this is where price can turn, all right? Price can turn and come back down to around 15 again, right? Just like you see here, come up and then boom. So if you're in a buy or you're looking for a buy, there's your buy right now. Um, just wait for another pullback, wait for something like this and then buy again. 
right? Just like this, and then buy again. Just like this, then buy. Wait for something like this on the one hour or four hour. Wait for that pullback, then buy again. Right? You'll know when to buy again because you'll see a strong bullish candlestick like this happening. Something like this happening. That's your breakout. That's your signal to get in the trade to buy. And then you want to ride all the way up to 18. And then gold. Last pair. Same thing here. So I thought price would reverse around here. It didn't. So silver is on a big, gold is on a big, big uptrend. Big, big uptrend. So price is coming all the way up to around 1360. So I'd be careful again. Wait for the pullback because it just broke through this strong resistance. Wait for a pullback. Wait for it to pull back before buying. All right. Wait for a pullback before buying. You got to wait for a flag. If you don't get a flag and it reverses like this strong, then a flag, then look to sell. All right. But this should reach actually 1360. So wait for a pullback on the four hour, one hour. Wait for something like this. Wait for something like this. Wait for something like that. And then buy. Your stop loss will always be below the previous low. So look left. If this is the low, your stop loss will be below there. And then your take profit is at the nearest high. All right. So as you can see, I didn't take no trades on tonight's IML session because nothing is ready. I'm looking at USD Swiss franc. That's the pair I'm really looking to get into. Right. I'm waiting for that opportunity to happen. Once I get a strong bullish uh, candlestick, we'll get in for our buy. And then we're riding this long term all the way back up to around 098, possibly um, 099. All right. And another pair I'm looking at is your odd. Your odd I'm liking. I'm letting this pull back. Let it pull back before I buy. This is going to be a nice buy right here. Your odd. I like your New Zealand. Doing the same thing. Let it pull back. Right doing the same thing. This is the move. Let it pull back. We can see this come all the way up. Take profit will be around 170, 200, if not all the way back up to 174. This has room to go all the way back up. All right. Broke through here. Let it pull back. Don't buy now. So the buy is not ready. I like that. Like GJ, Great Britain, JPY. Right. Great Britain, JPY. This is not a sell. Don't get in for a sell just yet. This can, I can see this consolidating. I can see it consolidating between here and here. It's going up and down, up and down. If it does that, then you can get in for a sell. If it ranges, then you can get in for a sell. But there is a strong possibility it can come back up to 153. So just be on the lookout for that. All right. And be on the lookout for Great Britain, Swiss Frank. That's another good opportunity. Be on the lookout for that because if it comes back up to that high, 134, you definitely want to look to get in for a sell. Even if it breaks the high, you definitely want to get in the sell. So, guys, now that you're, um, you got the YouTube link, please pass this along to your teams so they can study this, so they can see how trading's done. All right. Uh, I told you tonight's session will go a little bit longer. We've been on for about close to two hours. All right. Uh, this should be uh, uploaded very, very soon. Guys, watch the recordings. Don't just grab pairs, try to lock it in your head, and then you forget what to do, all right? Make sure when we're getting in trades, we're going to move up our stop loss once we secure profits. We want to use good risk management. We're not here to over leverage, hit the lotto in one night, right? And we want to be disciplined in our craft, okay? So we're going to return on Tuesday night. I thank you all for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. All right. I hope you guys got a lot of education out of this. Okay. Um, again, I'll be updating you guys all on the Telegram. If you don't have the Telegram link, I posted it on IML Elite. Make sure you look for it in there. Pass it along to your teammates, your friends, family, whoever. Whoever can use this education and use this knowledge and whoever wants to uh, join me on my journey from $200 all the way up. I'm building this account all 2018. That's what I'm doing. All right, guys, participate. Our goal here is to learn, enrich, educate ourselves, and to become better traders. All right. Everybody have a good night. Enjoy. I'll see you on Tuesday.